Well, I just pulled out here in the pasture and oh, looky here. What in the world? Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching us. Just came down here to pasture to give the Big Joe herd some cubes. I pull up and there's only four here. And I'm like, this looks different. Most of them run together all the time. But uh, this guy right here should not be in there. And that is Hoss. Hoss made his way into a Big Joe's pasture with his females. And uh, I guess he didn't want to wait till he was two. So... Um, and he's just been scuffling around with these mamas. And yesterday, Hoss was with them. The yearlings where he's supposed to be. But I guess he's uh, getting a fever. And wanting to uh, hang out with this guy here. Uh-huh. He's tussling with a cow. <clears throat> Not sure if that's tough love or what. Hmm. I think she's trying to put him in his place. Joe's just chilling. Big Joe's just hanging out while these two are over here scuffling around. Big Joe's unsure of what's going on here. Lovin's hanging out watching the show. They're still going at it. Man, he is, uh, Hoss is just about as tall as she is question is, is how am I going to get him back in here with these yearlings? What do you think, Big Joe? What do you think about Hoss so far? I know you've been smelling him, you know, through the fence and whatnot, but what do you think about him in the pasture with you? Did you whip him up some? Oh, okay. It's about to show some dominance here of who the, who the boss is. <laughs> Cut him off. Well, I let him out. And there's a size comparison between the two. Standing next to each other. He's feeling frisky. Big Joe's not sure. Not sure how he got over there. Um, none of these fences are tore down. This fence is not tore down, but I have noticed this lately. This is where Haas should be. But he's not. Problem child. That's so what I just pulled down here and uh, 
saw that he was in here and I think I have an idea that he just jumped the fence and it's the same area where the jumper 54 it likes to jump the fence which is right here I know the top strand is a little low and uh, this fence was one of the original fences that was on the property that was in decent enough shape to keep him in but now that we have a uh, the 54 jumper um, you know it's the problems there and now Haas has clearly jumped the fence as well um and you know it's just a cross fence it's not a boundary fence but this does raise a problem and so it looks like we're gonna have to do some fence repair um unfortunately and uh stretch this fence probably a a little bit tighter and uh raise it up a little bit so that's just uh part of it uh, and you know you're gonna have fence problems uh especially on existing or old fences um which is what we have here but uh look at the two up here on the hill so I don't know when he jumped this or when he got in there, but uh, he must have done it yesterday after I left because he was actually in here well, with the yearlings whenever I fed. So uh, I gave him a bell of hay yesterday. Um, so I'm assuming he jumped the fence the same place where 54, the cow that um, has had some, um, that uh, I've had problems with jumping this fence and um, she's in that pasture. And so... That's where he is now. So I'm gonna pull through here and see if I can possibly gate cut him. Um, if not, um, we'll figure something out. He's he's not hurting anything right now. He can't breed these females. He's not old enough yet. Um, bison have to be two. He'll be two in a couple months though. <laughs> so he's uh, he's not far off. And, and technically he could probably could breed right now. Technically, um, you know, if he could do his job. Um, but right now he's trying to mess with some of these cows that are pretty big, so. Well, I thought I had my GoPro recording, but I didn't fail on my part. Um, but what I did was, Haas was kind of hanging out right here, wanting back with his yearlings. I, I spread some cubes out and they were kicking him off. So he came over here and was hanging out with this gate still open. I didn't have any animals in this pasture because I've locked him out, which helped me out. Um, so he was hanging out here and kind of sniffing around. I walked in here, with some cubes, and I poured some cubes out and he followed me in. So I got him caught here which means now I can put him right back in there um, with them. So what's the funny is he's, uh, he's been kind of feisty lately, but maybe he got roughed up by some cows or something. I don't know. But, um, or Big Joe put him in his place, but he's, uh, he's not as feisty as he was. I'm gonna go find the rest of them. There's the jumper right there. 54. There's Kit. So Kit was with Dunbar. Bell Star was with Dunbar. And wherever Peaches is was with Dunbar. You know, take a look at some of these mamas, right? Like this one right here. They're into their third 
throw some cubes out for her so she'll stop making the cutter. They're into their third trimester. Mama, like this is a what I call a Texas mama. She didn't have a tag, and then I eventually, uh, when we caught her, I just put a TX on her tag. But uh, you can look at this mama. See, when we got her, when we got them in 21 is when we got them. They were not in good shape. I, I need to pull up some old footage of what they looked like when I brought these Texas um, animals up here just see the difference of how they look now they look so much better and it takes bison a long time to recover from malnutrition worm loads and, and parasites and those things it takes bison a lot longer than cattle to um, kind of get back into shape and uh, restore their health in 2022 last year uh, this uh, this Texas tag cow um, who's huge now she's beautiful um, and then uh, this Texas 11 cow um, were the only two out of the four Texas cows that didn't have babies. So that means that they weren't pregnant whenever I got them. So they didn't have babies last year. 32 and 54, whose calves are up at the barn up there, they both came in pregnant. The way their health was when I got them uh, wasn't great. And so I knew that there was probably a good chance that they weren't pregnant, some of them. Um, but luckily, there were two out of four, but these two right here, this one and the Texas 11 that's coming. This Texas 11 cow has changed so much. She has gotten so big. And um, you can really see the their bellies develop. And it's hard for me to get up real close to them, but you can start to see their bellies starting to drop a little bit and really take some shape. Um, and then you can really see it here. I was putting out hay the other day. You can kind of see it as oh, she's coming towards me. Um, let me put some cubes out for her real quick. The rest of them are going to notice me here in a second. Got their attention elsewhere. Oh, she's putting the kick in her. Here, here, here. All right. Let me go around to the other side. It's a little too close. Yeah, so here's a good shot of her belly um, up close. And the sun's not in the right place. I don't want to get myself in too bad a position, but you can uh, you can definitely see her belly starting to really drop and, and get big here. There we go. You can see it a little bit. And it's hard for you guys to see it if you're not here, but this cow, I really like her because from the top of her down to her, what we call a brisket, which is her chest, she's very deep and very very big right there and that what that does is make a big frame and uh she's able to produce a big calves you got a big mama with a big cavity you can produce a big calves which is they're capable of having big calves and so that's what we we like to see as far as uh, confirmation you know in a cow then you have to check their feet see how her back foot is straight right there that's a good sign she's got good feet to handle all the weight she's not leaning to one side or the other uh, the rest of them are showing up i'm gonna have to move but i'm excited to see what we have here um you know like peaches bell star and kit the three that came from uh dunbar uh, should all be pregnant with dunbar babies and they had their babies in this the uh in may so uh, if the younger females, like this one right here, this is from Noah at Broken Arrow Bison, um, 090. Uh, he, he gave me her as a gift, and um, I hope this year, this will be her first year to be pregnant because she's two, so hopefully she's carrying a calf. So we have the opportunity to have 11 calves here in this group with Big Joe. Um, not all of them will be Big Joe babies. Like I said, some of them will be Dunbar babies because... Um, we brought those three over. Still got some work to do on bringing others over. There's 12 in this group with Big Joe, 11 females, and then Big Joe. So we have an opportunity to have 11 uh, babies this spring. Um, some of these mamas that like, like her right there, the one I was just showing you, can really see the development. And that's going to be a Big Joe baby, which is exciting to see. Um, and this is a very diverse group, by the way. Um, and you guys are probably wondering, what the heck is this? I think this is an old bell. Uh, 
that's an old uh, hay bale holder um, ring, whatever you want to call it. It's solid. It's been out in this pasture for a long time, and I pulled it out of the bottom and brought it up here to the front, so I'm scooping open the skid steer. But minus that, um, this 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 herd is very diverse. So in this herd, I've got four Texas mamas. I've got two females that have not had babies yet. They are from Peter Cole in Missouri, a producer there, uh, a friend a friend of ours. And then I've got one from Noah, and I think she's originally from Iowa. And then I also have, um, let me see, I've got, now they're all moving so we can move in a safe place. And then we have We've got one from Noah, the 090, and then we have um, three from Gerald Parsons over in Stratford, Oklahoma, uh, the guy I first started with, or the first herd I started with, those three that I brought over from Dunbar. And then, let me think of who else is in here. Oh, and then there's a, one of the ones we raised, which is right here, I believe. We raised her. Um, she came over and we just had her here for a long time. Nope, that's Noah's. But so we've got we've got four different diverse groups here just in this small herd of um, 11 females. Uh, so that's uh, that's fun. This is the one we raised right here standing in front of me. So um, this is the only one that we've raised that's in this pen. The rest of them uh, are from all different places. Uh, so and here comes the big guy. He's moseying his way over here. I poured cubes out for him earlier, so he's... He's on his way in. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Put that tail down. I'm not here to hurt you. Be a threat. Don't hit my truck. Hoss isn't in here anymore. There's the one we raised right here. Yeah, you can see. Look how he's just coming right up to me. Okay, okay, okay. You guys let me back to my truck, please. I'm going to climb in the other side of my truck because this guy is in my way. Oh, there's cubes on the ground right there, so I'm having to climb over. Thanks, Big Joe. Oh. Hey, back up, please. Make me climb through my own truck. Hey, buddy. I know you don't like that. All right, hey, I gotta go. Got work to do. Gotta go. See you guys. Stay brown. All right, so Haas is over here. I think I can devise a plan here to get him back. Get out of there. Let's try something here. Come on, buddy. Hey. Get a feed sack for him. Watch this. down watch him come through there you go how to move a bison at cross timbers bison ranch job hoss you're back with your ladies all right good chat i think he's more mad because i didn't give him cubes 
full demon. But I got some cubes for you guys. Always got cubes for you. Whoa, don't spread them all out at once. Stuff. So goofy. Just stop and eat. Why are you chasing me? Port it out. I'm about to outrun them. Nope, they're gonna chase me. All right, so we've uh, got our bison chores done. We got Haas back in there with uh, all those yearlings, so we are good to go there. And you know, just a couple of shenanigans you gotta deal with every now and then. But it looks like we're gonna have to do some fence building, so, um, or some fence repair. But now we are going to work with our uh, new member here. She does have a new name and we're excited to bring it to you. It is Cora, C-O-R-A. Um, I appreciate all of the uh, names out there that have been commented. You know, I got a lot of buttermilk names. I got a lot of uh, butterscotch names. Um, but the previous owners called it a buttermilk uh, look or whatever. You can see some on our tail there. Um, and then my friend Mark, who I'm going to introduce to you later. Mark is the guy who got me hooked up with this horse. Mark came over and um, it was the first time for him to see her since we've got her here. And he actually trains horses for a living and so it's nice to have a good friend like that and he's the one who kind of got me into this and got me on a horse so those chickens are always so loud got me kind of on the horse thing and uh started so i appreciate his help but he came over one evening while marissa and brooks was here about to have chicken for dinner and showed me a couple little things to train her on and work with her um, I've been doing that. I've been working her. The training process has started on my end. Hey, girl. What do you think? Hmm? Something I for uh, something I want to mention to you guys um, is uh, March 11th is the um, Route 66 a Bison Roundup in Springfield, Missouri. Um, the Oklahoma Bison Association and the Missouri Bison Association are doing a joint sale. And like I said, it's called the Route 66 um, Bison Roundup there at Springfield, Missouri at this uh, pretty exciting looking venue, pretty nice looking venue. And so far, we've got well over 300 um, animals coming that are signed up to come. So very excited on the Oklahoma and Missouri Bison Association ends. Very excited for, for that. So um, if you guys want to come see a show, if you want to just come look at animals, if you're interested in raising bison, I will be there. Uh, there will be a lot of good bison producers there. And it's, uh, you know, kind of the, it's, it's literally right there off of Route 66 in Springfield, Missouri. And so if you're uh, in the surrounding states or cities, uh, you guys can come by. Even if you don't care to buy bison, come watch. It's just fun to come and watch um, and see all the bison and the different producers. So you guys, um, I'll be there March 11th, Springfield, Missouri. Anyways, thank you guys for watching us today. Thank you guys for being a part of our channel. We'll see you guys soon.